an instrumentation amplifier with three op amps realized shown here. Uh, this op amp and the other two op amps are all placed right in terms of the placement of and connection of the input terminal so that all three op amps are in uh, negative feedback operation and we're assuming they're ideal op amp and uh, operating in linear region, so not saturated. Therefore, we can run the linear analysis for them. Okay, so we want to see how it how we want to see how this works and uh, what is the gain or what is V out. Let's just uh, quickly uh, write what we can do. So in this case, you can see these two op amps are assumed to be operating in linear region of operation. Therefore, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make the assumption because they are in proper negative feedback and also linearly operating, they enforce virtual short. So it means if we are seeing this voltage drop with this polarity between the positive terminals, then we should, we should see the same exact thing with the same exact polarity between the two negative terminals. So that's what the op amp is enforcing. Now that voltage appears across R1. So therefore we can figure out what's this current that is flowing through R1. But that current cannot go to the input terminal of op amps because we're assuming input terminals have, they have uh, infinite impedance. So that same current has to flow through R2 and has to also flow through, down through the series to R, R2 as well. So therefore, for node A to B, we can find the voltage delta between these two guys. What I can say is the current I flowing through R1 is just simply the voltage across R1, which is Vn, divided by R1. And what I can say is because the same I is flowing through these series of resistors, effectively VAB is a voltage division uh, across the resistor and R1, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to just go brute force. VAB is just simply current I times the series of these resistors, which means the sum of these two resistors, three resistors, two R2 plus R1. And if you just substitute for I from this equation, you can just simply find that the outcome is, as if you say, is 1 plus 2R2 divided by R1 times Vn. Very nice. So we found Vab as a function of input voltage. Okay, that's good. Now, one nice consequence of this is the simplification that comes with it. Because what I can do is I can just effectively say, you know what, forget about this big picture, uh, sort of semi-busy circuit. Think of this uh, op-amp with these polarity. Keep it. Uh, so I'm going to repeat R4, and I'm going to repeat the output voltage. Also, we have this R3, so keep it there. Great. And for positive terminal, as you can see, R4 to ground. So keep it there. And then you can see R3. OK, so what I can do, since I uh, computed VAB as a function of V in, I can just substitute for this whole thing as if I have just one input voltage source here with a value VAB. That simplifies a lot of the stuff. Given that this op amp is operating in linear region of operation and we are assuming it's in uh, negative feedback, it enforces virtual short uh, for the two input terminals. So therefore, Vx here for this the voltage at the negative terminal should be the same as Vx here, the voltage at the positive terminal. So these two nodes have the same voltage. Effectively, this loop here with a current, let's say, defining uh, a current going through the loop like this, it would look like uh, as simple as this, it would look like a circuit with one input voltage source, VAB, one resistor R3, a VX, and then another resistor R3. You're assuming the current I flowing through them, and that also is at VX. So there is a simple loop here. We can write a KDL with a current flowing through the loop. And when you write it with this definition of the direction of current, you end up with VAB is simply 2 times R3 times I. Let's keep this. OK, now you have another loop as well uh, here. Maybe I use a different color to show it. 
So that loop is the loop that uh, the current flows from ground through R4, goes through R3, goes through the voltage source, then goes back through R3, cannot go to input terminal. So that same current flows to R4 to the output. So you have a big loop, large loop from ground to be out. You can write a KVL over there. That KVL will be zero, which is a starting point, negative voltage dropped across these four resistors, which will be two times R3 plus R4, effectively IR4, IR3, IR3, IR4. And then you have, be careful, the voltage drop across these resistors is with this polarity. Um, and then when you get to VAB, the polarity is different. So that's why the sign uh, for the VAB should be positive in the way that I'm writing this KVL. And when you do this, finally you get to the out. Okay, then I, oh, I forgot to multiply this by I. So the current I is flowing through these resistors. Okay, now the nice thing is I have I as a function of VAB here. So let's do that. I'm going to substitute uh, I with what I have here. So therefore, I can write V out is uh, when I substitute I is VAB divided by 2R3. So you get 2 times R3 plus R4 divided by 2R3 uh, VAB. And then you have also VAB. That plus VAB is for the last component we have. So therefore, V out is equal to, of course, when you simplify this whole thing, it becomes 1 plus R4 over R3, and there is a negative sign, this negative sign. Um, so it's effectively uh, negative 1 plus, uh, sorry, negative 1 minus R4 over R3 times VAB, and then plus 1 times VAB. So that's what you get. And these two cancel out, of course. And what we get is the nice outcome, which says V out over VAB. Or maybe we just stick with this and use another uh, substitution. You remember that at the beginning we found that VAB as a function of V in a simple equation like this. So let's actually substitute VAB using this equation we have. So I'm going to substitute and I'm going to write. So remember, VAB is 1 plus 2R2 divided by R1VN. So as a result, 1 plus 2R2 divided by R1 times Bn, that's the substitution substitution for VAB. And then inside this parentheses, what remains is negative R4 times uh, divided by R3, and that's equal to V out. Finally, we got it. So uh, overall gain V out over Vn for this, diff uh, for this instrumentation of the fire is just simply negative R4 divided by R3 times 1 plus 2 times R2 divided by R1. This is what we were looking for. So the gain of this instrumentation amplifier is nicely a function of the ratio between R2 and R1, ratio of R2 and R1, and ratio of R4 and R3 in this manner that is shown here. Um, so you can you can make the adjustment if, for example, you uh, properly design a choice of R1 and R2. For example, you set, uh, let's say, R1 twice R2. Uh, then, then what you get here, uh, two times R2 or R1 becomes one. One plus one becomes two, and therefore the whole gain for the instrumentation amplifier becomes negative two R4 over R3. So. Basically, you can say with the proper setup for R1 and R2, the whole gain is a function of a relation, ratio between R4 and R3 as well. The nice thing about instrumentation amplifier versus this simplified version is, in this simplified version, uh, input uh, source is not isolated from the R3 and R4 and their variation. But here, with existence of this input buffers or op amps, input voltage source, which could be a very sensitive sensor, is actually isolated from the rest of the circuit and the rest of the resistance, resistances in the circuit cannot affect the behavior 
um, practically affect the behavior and performance of that sensor. So um, that's the reason we would like to um, use the instrumentation amplifier in practice, actually. Hope this is helpful.